so the next topic is uh, compliance management for permits, um, which is a talk that I'm going to be giving. And Nate, you're, yeah, thanks very much. That, that talk is a great lead in to uh, the, uh, the next topic because um, as I'm going to be talking about uh, um, the use of Landfolio for compliance managed for permits, um, the use of Landfolio for managing land access and all of the rights and restrictions um, and managing the uh, the spatial extent of that land access is obviously something that's bread and butter for for Landfolio. So all of those topics and concerns that um, that Nate raised in his previous talk are uh, are definitely things that can be addressed or that Landfolio can uh, can help address and and manage. Okay. Um, so uh, next topic, uh, compliance uh, management for permits. Oh, and I'm having the same, uh, I'm having the same problem Nate had earlier. <laughs> I can't advance my slides. Okay. It is a bit bizarre. I'm going to stop sharing. It's weird. It's almost like when you start sharing in Teams, you lose the ability to advance your slides okay there we go okay <laughs> yeah okay we're back um so managing mineral and surface rights is obviously important but full land compliance management involves taking care of much much more including what nate just mentioned plus um things like environmental permits that are relevant to both um developing properties uh, and operating properties, whether you're a mining company, a renewable company, a forestry company. Um, managing uh, exploration plans and permits, for example, um, what is regulated in Ontario as, as part of holding uh, mineral rights in Ontario. Uh, land use and land access permits so along the lines of the sort of things that, uh, that Nate was just talking about. Um, managing drilling and blasting permits, managing construction permits, transportation permits, um, managing water rights and permits, and we gave um, we gave uh, a couple of presentations on that in our, at our 2022 user conference, uh, and those presentations are available on our website if anyone wants to go and see how land failure can be used for managing water rights, uh, and um, and and many others. Uh, why should I care about permitting? Um, most of the people on, uh, that are with us today will will understand why you can't just bury your head in the sand when it comes to uh, when it comes to permitting. There are lots and lots of use cases out there of uh, things that have gone wrong. Um, there's uh, an issue with non-compliance with existing uh, with existing regulations that can lead to mine closures and uh, and suspensions. Um, you can uh, end up with a loss of social license to operate, uh, including fines, complaints, uh, and reputation damage. And uh, and then obviously uh, that can all lead to to significant delays, which which makes shareholders uh, shareholders grumpy. So how can uh, how can Landfolio help? Um, so you can leverage your existing investment in Landfolio by extending its use for permit management. Um, with the Landfolio integration tool sets that are available, you can uh, integrate Landfolio with specialized in environmental data management tools. Um, Landfolio in and of itself is not an environmental data management tool. It can certainly manage um, all of the permits, the key permit obligations, um, and and any any regulatory workflows, but when it comes to managing the actual environmental data, um, that is best housed in a third party solution such as Envirosys from our acquire um, owners, um, and that's a better place to put the actual uh, you know the scientific data that comes with managing your environmental permits. Um, 
so permits themselves can be related to uh, your existing um, surface and, and mineral rights uh, and any legal agreements that you have on your properties. Um, land failure has a, uh, has a highly configurable data model, as most of you know, and so creating new objects in land folio for different types of permits is, uh, is something that's, that's easily doable. Um, and it's essentially an, an open book in terms of uh, the sort of permits that, that, that you can uh, create in the system. So you can put in your environmental permits, your land use permits, um, your access permits, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the, the kind of extent and scope of, of what you can, um, can put into land folio is essentially, you know, essentially without limit when it comes to, uh, when it comes to permit management. So there's obviously, uh, there's obviously creating the, uh, the business record holders themselves um, for, that, for that permit data. Um, and then many of the same requirements that you have for, for, for land and mineral rights are, are needed for permits. So you need to be able to manage um, key dates Right. When is this permit valid from and to? When is it uh, renewing? Uh, you need to be able to assign responsibility for managing the permits to to specific users or user groups. Uh, we can uh, configure regulatory workflows where there are regulations that govern um, how a um, you know how, how a permit is managed. Um, so things like applications, approvals, payments, renewals, expiries, um, those are all uh, all obligations that be can be configured as as workflows. Over and above the workflows, there are obviously the conditions that go along with the permit. Those conditions can be related to um, one or more actions along with the along with the appropriate uh, appropriate approvals. Um, like any of the other data types in Landfolio, permits can have a spatial context, um, and so permits can have shapes, be those uh, point uh, point line or polygon shapes. Um, permits can have uh, automated reporting associated with them and, and notifications that go out uh, reminding people of, of the upcoming obligations. Um, and then, uh, you know, document management that's associated with permits. So the actual copies of the permit themselves, any amendments, any reports that are submitted um, to go along with those permits can all be can all be tracked as uh, as business uh, as related records in uh, in in the system. And then, uh, most critically, from a compliance perspective, the the detailed audit history that. Um, happens in Landfolio when any uh, any particular um, attribute is um, is modified either by a user or via a business process um, really helps in in, in driving the, the the compliance around permitting. So what do we um, what do we have um, in Landfolio that can assist uh, with some of the nuances of of permit management? So as many of you know, we uh, we have this uh, conditions functionality where um, a, a specific permit condition can be given uh, the associated number. Uh, the condition type can be categorized via a drop down list uh, into different categories. Uh, the example here I have is an environmental authority from a, a permit in Queensland in Australia. Um, a, a permit can have a description, um, and then if needed, uh, permits can have. Um, can have conditions and values, and then those conditions can be linked to uh, to specific actions. So this is this is essentially a way to get uh, a high level summary of all of the key environmental conditions into the system. These conditions are searchable, and it gives you a little executive summary or snapshot of the key conditions without you needing to open up the permit document to to go and take a look at those. And then you can obviously link those conditions to to one or more actions, uh, and it's all hyperlinked. Um, so when you click on the action, it will actually go in and uh, and pull up that action for you in in the system itself. And um, as I mentioned in one of my earlier slides, obviously permits can be related to other tenures. Um, and so here we've got an example of where an environmental authority. Permit type um, is linked to a, a specific uh, expiration call permit, and that's just a way of establishing a link between the permit and the and the underlying uh, the underlying mineral tenure. So conditions have been around for a long time uh, in Landfolio, and 
that is one place that um, you can manage some of the some of the nuanced data that goes along with environmental permits. Um, but we also have um, relatively new functionality in Landfolio. It's called structured data. Many of you will probably be familiar with structured data already. We did talk about it quite a lot at the 2022 conference when it was still fairly new. Um, but structured data in uh, the context of environmental permit management adds a whole nother layer of, of data management to the system that goes beyond what uh, conditions uh, just on their own would have offered in the past. So structured data provides us with the ability to configure customized tabs and fields to track and manage client specific data, such as permitting information. And this can extend to you know, land access um, as well, and a lot of the rights and restrictions that that Nate talked about in his previous uh, in his previous presentation. Structured data can either be viewed as a form, which would be for a single entry um, tracking a single attribute, or you can have a table of structured data, so akin to a little Excel, you know, the equivalent of an Excel table embedded in a in a business record, which can then obviously have have many records associated with it. And one of the advantages of structured data over conditions is that there are a large number of data types that are available in structured data. We are continuing to add to this list over time. Since 2022, we've added a few things here as well. I'm not going to go through all of these um, in, in a huge amount of detail, but I will point out that um, actions can now be linked to um, structured data as well. You can also embed individual usernames into business records in, in, in structured data, uh, along with a whole lot of other um, useful attribute types, um, including drop down lists, freeform text fields, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this opens up a whole uh, um, a whole additional level of um, of detail to the to the data management capabilities. So just a few examples of structured data, and again, I'm I'm picking on uh, or using this environmental authority permit in in, in Queensland. Um, and so here you can see uh, a structured data tab, which is for the environmental authority monitoring. Uh, and these are pretty much you know pretty similar to what you might put in uh, into a conditions table, except you can see that we've got a whole lot of additional attributes that we are now storing in here. So uh, we've got a couple of yes, no fields. Are there site plans, journal, photographs? Um, what is the, the frequency on which this particular obligation needs to be monitored? Is that, uh, you know, is this particular condition compliant at the moment? Who's responsible for it? That's that user that I was talking about. And here's the action I was talking about where you can actually um, link uh, actions to structured data, individual structured data entries. Um, one of the other things that we are also able to do with structured data is to uh, is to synchronize um, to synchronize those uh, attributes or sy synchronize the attributes with some of the external environmental data management systems. So um, we have a proof of concept integration that we've done with uh, the Envirus's approvals, obligations, and and compliance module, where we um, effectively synchronize the information in the structured data with um, the compliance management um, of the individual obligations that are being managed in the environmental data solution. And then we feed that information uh, back into Landfolio through, uh, through an API connection. And so in this case here, you can have um, those approvals, obligation and compliance listed out uh, along with a reference number, a description, um the the type of uh you know type of compliance that needs to be monitored and then most critically you're going to have a you can have a compliance um category associated with each one of those um with uh, information that's that's updated and so we can push we can push these key conditions across uh to Envirosys and we can get feedback from that Envirosys product on the status of 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 that compliance um and so that way you can use Landfolio to manage the core um, permit obligations around uh, the key conditions, uh, start date, end dates, uh, renewals, expiries, et cetera, uh, but then hand it off to Envirosys for 
uh, doing the actual environmental data management, managing the, the compliance, setting the thresholds. For example, if you're doing, you know, tailings geochemistry, um, setting your, you know, the thresholds and managing the, you know, managing compliance within those, those thresholds in that environmental data management system. Um, I just threw up this example here to show you an example of where you have structured data um, as a form. Um, and so uh, here I have a form of structured data, which is a property acquisition detail. You can also put more than one structured data element on a structured data page. And so here I actually have the top of this page is, or the top of this uh, structured data element is, is a form. The bottom of it is a table, and so um, I can see those together in a in a single uh, uh, in a single tab, um, which which can obviously be very useful. And I can mix uh, mix form and tabular data together. I can have more than one table on a page. I can also have uh, more than one one form on a page. So um, that all provides a pretty useful functionality. Okay. Um, yeah. So hopefully that's given everyone a decent overview of. Um, of uh, of environmental permit management. Um, again, um, if you have any any questions around this, please feel free to um, post those in the chat. Um, and let me see.